Good morning. This is um, morning prayer on Wednesday, the fourth week of Lent in 2020. Um, I'm going to give you some page numbers. If you have a prayer book, an Episcopal prayer book, you're going to find the service on page 80, and then you will find the canticles, Kyrie Pantocrator, which means uh, Lord of the Universe, essentially. Um, it's a Byzantine phrase, but it's Canticle 14 on page 90, and um, um, uh, Benedictus Dominus Deus, which is uh, 16 on page 92. Uh, so if you want to follow along with those. The other thing you can do is you can get... Um, the electronic common prayer on your app store or your um, uh, appropriate uh, app facility on your uh, Samsung phone, and uh, you can um, you can follow along. It's uh, it is the prayer book. It's very accessible. That's electronic common prayer. We're on page 80 to begin the service. Um, Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You are full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore you. Come, let us sing to you. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before your presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to you with psalms. For you are a great God and a great ruler above all gods. In your hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills is yours also. The sea is yours, for you made it, and your hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before you, our Maker. For you are our God, and we are the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to your, we would hearken to your voice. Um, now, you may notice that I changed some of the words. I made this direct address to God rather than about God. Um, come, let us sing to the Lord is what it says on the page. But come, let us sing to you is um, directing it directly to God. I do that. It helps with the, the gender, uh, masculine gender bias of, of our, of our, um, of our language in the 79 prayer book. Um, I have a daughter and so I'm something of a, okay. So the Psalm today is Psalm 101. Um, and the psalm is, uh, 101 is on page, um, uh, 7.30, page 7.30 in the prayer book. We will also then go over to Psalm 109. Sometimes they string together several psalms. They're usually psalms that appear to be of the same author or same substance. Um, uh, 109 is, uh, we skip verses four through, 5 through 19 um, just because they are probably about bashing heads and doing things that we don't want to do. Again, what we do for this is to uh, sing monotone and then go up at the end. So it's da 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 Back to where we started from. Psalm 101. I will sing of mercy and justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing praises. I will strive to follow the blameless course. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk with sincerity of heart within my house. I will set no worthless things before my eyes. 
I hate the doers of evil deeds. They shall not remain with me. A crooked heart shall be far from me. I will not know evil. Those who in secret slander their neighbors, I will destroy. Those who have haughty look and a proud heart, I cannot abide. My eyes are upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. And only those who lead a blameless life shall be my servants. Those who act deceitfully shall not dwell in my house. And those who tell lies shall not continue in my sight. I will soon destroy all the wicked of the land. I will soon I may that I may root out all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. Now over to 109. Hold not your tongue, O God of my praise, for the mouth of the wicked, the mouth of the deceitful is opened against me. They speak to me with lying tongue. They encompass me with hateful words and fight against me without cause. Despite my love, they accuse me. But as for me, I pray for them. They repay evil for good and hatred for my love. And then going over to verse 20. But you, O Lord God, O oh, deal with me according to your name. For you render mercy's sake, deliver me. For I am poor and needy, and my heart is wounded within me. I have faded away like a shadow when it lengthens. I am shaken off like a locust. My knees are weak through fasting and my flesh is wasted and gaunt. I have become a reproach to them. They see and shake their heads. Help me, O Lord, my God. Save me for your mercy's sake. Let them know that this is, is your hand, that you, O Lord, have done it. They may curse but you will bless. Let those rise up against me be put to shame. Let my accusers be clothed with disgrace and wrap themselves in their shame as a cloak. I will give great thanks to the Lord with my mouth. In the midst of the multitude will I praise him because he stands at the right hand of the needy to save his life from those who would condemn him. And a reading from the book of Genesis, from the last chapter. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, what if Joseph still bears grudge against us and um, pays us back in full for all the wrong that we have done him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave his instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong that he did, we did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of God, your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept fell down before him and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you um, intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. So Joseph remained in Egypt, he and his father's household. And Joseph 
lived 110 years. Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation, the children of Machar and of Manasseh, were also born on Joseph's knees. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am about to die, but God will surely come to you and bring you up out of the land to the land that we swore that he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, also to Sarah, Rebekah, Leah, and Rachel. So Joseph made the Israelites swear, saying, When God comes to you, you shall carry out my bones from there. And Joseph died being 110 years old. He was embalmed and placed in a coffin in Egypt. Now we're going to do the Canticle 14, um, which is Kyrie Pantocrator, that is Kyrie, which is Lord, and Pantocrator, which is Lord of the Universe. It is a Lenten thing, and it's on page 90 if you're following in the prayer book. O Lord, the ruler of the heavens and earth. Well, we won't sing it. It's too much trouble. O Lord, the ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me. In accordance with your great mercy, and I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the power of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Okay, a reading from the Gospel of Mark. The Pharisees came and began to argue with Jesus, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit, and he said, why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he left them. And getting into a boat again, he went across to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, Watch out, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. And they said to one another, Is it because we have no bread? And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to him, to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you, not, do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full did you collect? And they said, Seven. Then he said to them, Do you not yet understand? They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. 
And when he had put saliva in his eyes and laid his hands on him, he said to them, can you see anything? And the man looked up and he said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. Here ends the reading. Canticle 16, which is Benedictus Dominus Deus, uh, the song of Zechariah from Luke's Gospel. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember his holy covenant. He, this was the oath that he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation for the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Over on page 96, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you, let us pray. Now I'm going to sing this. Um, and maybe eventually you'll get it. It's a simple tune. It's actually in the, in the hymnal. I'll give you the number at the end. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The first uh, suffrages, suffrages A, show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Now, I generally use the colic for the coming week rather from, than the past, so I'm going to the colic for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Almighty God, you alone bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. 
Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty, Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So let us pray for those who have died. I pray for my family, my mother Marion, my brother-in-law Larry, my uncle, my father Russell, and my uncle Joe, and my Aunt Betty. Um, and I'd invite your intercessions for those in your family who have gone away and those whom you love. Let us pray for those who have uh, are, who are sick. I pray for Sally, um, uh, for Andrea, for Eric, for Anne. Pray for the nation, which is going through the throes of the um, COVID-19 virus. Um, uh, when the prayer suggested that God brings under un the unruly wills of of humans, I was thinking that we're, they're pretty unruly right now, Lord, if you would talk to our leadership and tell them that the economy is not the only thing that's at stake here. <clears throat> For this beautiful day, which started in fog and now is cleared off in blue and it's a partly cloudy day, it's a lovely day. Watch over and defend us, Lord, as we pray the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, <clears throat> we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Well, I am mostly finished, but I... A couple of um, housekeeping things. Uh, 
that's the electronic common prayer that you can get at the App Store or from uh, Google Play or whatever your, your resource for apps is. Um, it is an easy to use um, thing. There are services which are um, uh, like uh, baptism and communion, but there are also the offices and we're doing the daily office of morning prayer. Um, there's a daily office of evening prayer, there's Compline, there's, um, I noticed that um, there are a number of churches that at nine o'clock at night are doing Compline, which I think is a, a wonderful thing to remember and to do with them. Um, I've been thinking about, I've been in the house for days and um, um, I took my my truck out for a walk yesterday because it needed to be run. So I went around the block a few times. Um, all of us have those, those things. And of course I put out the trash because Wednesday for us is trash pickup day. Um, I've noticed the conversation has uh, shifted in the national and local. Um, people are now talking about the um, cost benefit of of deaths versus uh, destroying the economy. Well, the economy will come back. It's um, it came back in um, in o seven o eight, and uh, they've given a much bigger stimulus to it this time than they did last time. They would only let Obama do about seven hundred uh, billion dollars, and they've done two trillion for this particular stimulus package. So I suspect that once the, the threat of uh, COVID-19 is over, the economy will take off. Um, nevertheless, as one in the, the group that is uh, <laughs> liable to die if one gets it, um, there are interesting problems. The, we are not at all prepared for um, this pandemic. And uh, I noticed that uh, Andrew Cuomo said yesterday that he, um, he had received uh, 400 ventilators, which was problematic because he needed 30,000. Um, we have poorly prepared ourselves for this. And so if people are going to um, make the cost benefit, then they should have uh, prepared for it better. I would be perfectly willing to uh, um, risk my life. Um, as a matter of fact, anybody who's older, most of us already have uh, let much of life go already and are hopefully our life is prepared to go if we have to, um, but the sort of uh, callous comparisons that uh, some people have made are painful to listen to and, um, and infuriating. So the good news is, is that um, we are a democracy and we get to talk about it. Um, we get to talk about it with each other, even if it's only virtually. Um, there is still a legislature and there is still, um, um, there will be a vote eventually once this uh, um, threat passes um, and we will go back to our normal life, hopefully. It will be changed. There will be many people gone from it. Um, anyway, um, I was thinking of, uh, of Joseph as he, uh, as his father has died and his brothers are now and afraid. Um, uh, I was listening to some fellow who said, uh, uh, he was more concerned about his, his, uh, his, um, grandchildren. Well, he's lucky he had six grandchildren, so he had something to 
to worry about there. But not everybody has grandchildren. Not everybody is a couple. Not everybody has had the obviously uh, um, smooth life of this fellow. He was obviously, he was dressed in his power suit, and he, uh, I don't think, probably has had too many days um, of starvation. Perhaps he did. You, we don't know each other's stories. Um, but when you start making calculations about um, cost effectiveness, you are summarizing people's stories into um, cliches and into stereotypes. And that, unfortunately, is not a good way to make decisions. The president optimistically has said he'd like the economy to open by Easter. Um, it took four months in Wuhan, China. So I'm, I'm not sanguine about his prediction. But let's not govern by um, wishful thinking. Let's govern by the reality of what's going on. After all, old people are not the only ones who die from this. And if they're not enough ventilators, they're going to be people who, who are young who need it too. So um, let's not try to make this a, an either or defensive position. We're in this together. Anyway, blessings to you. Thank you for, for being part of this.